Hey, welcome back. I'm Nicole Romanoff. In today's video, I want to share with you some tips about tethering. Tethering is when we use a cable and we connect it to our camera and then display the images on our computer, a laptop like I have. You can also tether it to your phone or an iPad. I love to do this on set because it shows the team and the client exactly how things are looking and it opens up that discussion for improvement. If you like this video, make sure to watch it to the end and give it a like and then also subscribe for more tips, tutorials and inspiration. So let's get to it. Tip number one is to make sure that you're using Capture One. Capture One is known for its fast and stable performance. It will connect to your camera right away and then it also transfers images instantly. It is the gold standard when it comes to tethering. And you'll find on any commercial shoot or professional shoot where they are tethering, it will be Capture One that they are using. So, highly recommend. Tip number two is a tip that will help you get started. If you're finding that you're getting these error messages when you start tethering, one of the problems could potentially be um, that you have a memory card in your camera. So before you start shooting, make sure to remove the memory cards, which yes, I get is a little bit scary, but the images are saved directly onto your computer. I've never had an issue with that and I've worked with other photographers who have created a workflow where it copies to their computer and then is also backed up on a cloud service like Dropbox or on an external hard drive. If you're going to be tethering to Capture One, make sure to remove those memory cards. Otherwise, you will experience some error messages. Tip number three has to do with your tether cables. This might be an unpopular opinion, but I have had several issues spending a couple hundred dollars on tether tool cables. They just have not worked for me and I treat my equipment well. So I make sure that I'm wrapping those cords the right way, but they haven't lasted me all too long and then I've had to replace them. I've actually had the best luck with like a $12 cable. So it isn't something that you have to spend over $100 on. Choose a cable that is under 12 feet. If it is over 12 feet, you might run into some issues. In that case, you might need to look into a powered USB hub uh, to get a little bit extra power to transfer images to your computer. Tip number four has to do with protecting your tether cable. You're going to want to make sure that you get the longest life out of your cable and the biggest thing is that you don't want to run into issues tethering while you're on set with a client. Uh, trust me, I've been there and it's not fun. So you're going to want to make sure that you have either a tether block or some sort of cable uh, management system to protect your cord. The one that I'm using is just a small uh, tether block and it attaches to where I would put my tripod and it just tightens and it gives a, a nice big loop uh, to protect the cord so that it's not being bent and yanked on too much. It also will make sure that this stays firmly inside of your camera. Again, the biggest thing, you don't want to run into any issues on set tethering in front of your client. So a tether block is really important to have. What I like about this one too is that you can still use it with a tripod. There's a hole right there that you would just attach to the top of your tripod. Tip number five is just to adjust your images in your computer as you're tethering. I usually take a few test shots to start and then once I get a lighting situation set up that I feel pretty confident and excited about, I'll just make some minor adjustments to that image, either contrast, saturation, whatever the image needs. And then what's nice is that Capture One will take those settings and apply it to the rest of the images that I take. This just gives me a better idea of what the final outcome will be and it also gives my client a better idea of what the final outcome will be and then if they have any suggestions. So if they notice that the color of the outfit isn't quite what they had in mind or the makeup 
uh, isn't quite the tone or the saturation that they want, you can adjust that and show them exactly what it will get close to in the end. I also like it because if you make those adjustments in your computer, then it will apply them to all the images afterward. So just a nice way to speed up your workflow as well. So that's it for today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and comment with any tips that you would add or if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. And make sure to subscribe for more tips, tutorials, and inspiration. And I'll see you next time. Bye.